לעולם אדוני לברכה, נמצא בשמיים, מדור ודור עם ילדיך, כונן תא ארץ ותעמוד. למשפטיך עמדו היום, כי הכל על ידיך, מאהבתי את אוהדיך, כל היום ושיחתי. לך אני הושיעני, כי פיגודך דרשתי. לך אני הושיעני, כי פיגודך דרשתי. Shalom and welcome to Torah Treasures with yours truly, Michael Eliyahu Ben David. I have a short teaching to hopefully encourage you. I want to keep the flame going, keep the fire lit on the menorah. <laughs> um, and this is a short teaching on Kedushim. This is the week's Torah portion. It's found in Vayikra, Leviticus, chapters 19 and 20. And I'm going to connect it with the story of the Talmudim of Yeshua walking on the road to Emmaus. So I hope you'll be encouraged and blessed by that. So, first of all, let's give thanks to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and pray that He will bless this, this Deva, this word, this Deva Torah. Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, we come before you and we give you thanks for this Torah portion. We thank you for your living word that is alive and well. We thank you that you want to instruct us in the way of life. And you want, to, you want us to reflect your holiness in everything that we do. And you want us to know you. So I pray that you, as we break this bread and, I pray, and we bless it, I pray that you would draw us, draw us closer to you so, uh, so that we may truly be holy unto you um, and holy before your sight and before all men, especially holy before you. That's what counts the most. And I ask this in Yeshua's name. So, beloved, Kedushim to you. Let's start reading a little bit in uh, Leviticus 19. וידבר אדוני אל משה לאמור, and אדוני spoke to משה saying, דבר אל כל עדת בני ישראל ואמרת עליהם, קדושים תהיו כי קדוש, אני י"ה ו"ה אדוני אלוהיכם. Speak, uh, and the Lord spoke to unto Moses saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, Adonai, your God, am holy. It actually says, Kedushim ti yu ki kadosh, you shall be holy because holy. I am Adonai your God. Just be holy because of holiness itself. Because I am holy, basically. He is kadosh. Kadosh Israel is one of the names we, we give. Um, he gives himself and we call him. The Holy One of Israel, Kadosh Israel. So he is kadosh. Be kadosh because I am kadosh. Um, and so. The only way we can be Kadosh is knowing this Holy One of Israel, Kadosh Israel. It's in the knowing Him. Because in every instruction He gives after that, and in, in what it means to be holy, to be holy is to know Him first and, and, and foremost, and is to do the things that reflect His holiness, um, the things that reflect His character. And we can only do these things, again, by knowing Him. Because after every instruction, it ends with, For I am yud hey vav hey your Elohim. So all these things can be achieved if you are in me, in the I am, the great I am, okay? So um, you shall fear every man his mother and his father, and at Shabbatai Tishmol, and my Shabbat you shall keep. One cannot even do that unless you know him. It's so true. Many of us are keeping Shabbat, are coming to Shabbat, not because we're raised in a Jewish home, not because we're raised um, um, religious in any way, but because we know him. And because we know him, we're keeping his Shabbat. So in keeping these things, in doing the things that, that, that are proof of our holiness or 
that align with, with being holy, we can only do these things in, because we know him. And he says, turn ye, turn ye not unto the idols. Do not turn to idols, nor make for yourself molten gods. Again, I am. yud heh vav Eloheichem. I am yud heh vav your God. So do not turn to idols. Do not make yourself um, um, false gods because you know me. Okay? Because you know me, you will not do these things. And when you offer sacrifice and peace offerings unto the Lord, unto Hashem, you shall offer it that you may be accepted. It goes on to how to, to do so. And what this is teaching me, holiness can only be achieved first by knowing him. And second, by doing the instructions that he's given us from Genesis to Revelations, from the Torah to the Nevi'im and even to the Brit Chadashah. So holiness comes by knowing him. You should not swear in verse 12. You, you shall not steal. You shall not do any of these things. You shall not swear um, falsely by my name. You shall not profane the name of, you, uh, of your God because I am you, the he. So the only people that do not profane the name of God are those who know him. Again, holiness and walking in holiness comes because we know him. And if we don't know him, there's no way we can achieve holiness. You have monks and people who are locking themselves up in the mountains and, and, and different religions, uh, locking away from society, from the world to become holy. But they can try all they want till they, till they turn blue and die. Um, they will never reach holiness. They will just separate themselves from the world. But Yeshua says, uh, we are not of the world, but we are in the world, right? But we're not of it. And, uh, and while we're in the world, we're to um, basically decimate his holiness, the knowledge of him, and fill the earth with seeds of, of the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea. So we're not to lock ourselves away. Locking ourselves away somewhere does not make you holy. It's knowing him. And when you know him, you can't help but to do the right things um, and to not oppress your neighbor and to not steal, to not curse the deaf, to not put stumbling blocks before the blind, because all those things are things that God himself would not do. He takes care of the weak. He takes care of those who, who are in need. Right? You shall not respect the person of the poor, nor favor the person of the mighty, the rich, but in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. Do not, respect, uh, 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 do not disrespect the poor because he is poor. Do not respect the rich because he is rich. You know, you should just treat everyone the same way because God is gracious to both the rich and the poor. He is gracious to the righteous and the unrighteous. And we ought to reflect his, his um, character in doing all these things. He despises false wages. He wants us to deal with um, righteous wages in the righteousness and the standard that's found in the Torah. We, that's our standard. We don't have any other sin about what's written in the Torah. Because, for the most part, because of who he is, I am the Lord your God. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am. You'd hey, fafe. How can you love your neighbor as yourself? By knowing the I am, the great I am. God wants us to take care of the stranger. He says, if a stranger sojourn in your land, with you in your land, you shall do him no wrong. So God tests us by um, uh, putting strangers in our midst to see how we were treated because he says once you were strangers in Egypt. And so how we take care of a stranger also reflects holiness, that we are a holy people. The stranger that sojourns with you shall be as unto you as a home born among you, and you shall love him as thyself. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. And so we're called to observe his statutes and his ordinances and do all of them as best we can, because he is yud hey vav Yeshua himself says, be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. And Yeshua himself says, I only do as I see my Father, um, uh, whatever my Father is doing. I speak, I only, I only speak what I hear my Father speaks. And so Yeshua came to reveal the Father, and he came to show us how we ought to live. And so we ought to do the same thing. We ought to do only as we see Yeshua do, and speak as we see him do, just like he only did what he... Um, he saw his father do and, and spoke what he heard his father speak. Yeshua came to reveal the father unto the world. And we're called to reveal Yeshua unto the world and to follow him. Hallelujah. And when we follow him, then remain in his presence. That's where true holiness is.
Okay, so if I take you to the book of Luke, the epistle of Luke, you will see what I mean. This is a story about the, the Talmudim, the, the disciples that are walking to the road of Emmaus. Um, this is Luke 24, verse 13. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called um, Emmaus. And Emmaus could, is, is, could be, uh, uh, the meaning of it could be hot springs, hot mat, I believe. Or it could actually mean, in Greek, the road of salvation. No one is really sure. But it's interesting. They were on the road to salvation, and they meet salvation himself, Yeshua, and he was a stranger to them. Let's keep reading and see what uh, the scripture is telling us here. Now behold, two of the Talmudim were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Yerushalayim. And they talked together all of these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned together that Yeshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did, they did not know him. It's interesting that we could be his Talmudim and Yeshua could be in our midst and be a stranger. Um, in our midst, and our eyes are restrained from seeing who he is. That's interesting. Bear that in mind. You could be a disciple. You could be one who claims to know him, and he is a stranger to you. How come? Well, let's continue to read. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk, and why are you sad? So they were sad. They had lost hope because Yeshua had been crucified and was buried, and it's been three days and uh, they were saddened. Even though they had heard of rumors that he was risen, they were still sad. They still had no hope. Then the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said to him, interesting enough, beloved, Cleopas means vision of glory. So Cleopas, his name means vision of glory, is actually seeing the image of the invisible God in, in all of his glory, and he's not seeing it. His eyes were restrained to see the glory of the glorious one. So Cleopas said to him, are you the only stranger in Yerushalayim? <laughs> are you the only stranger in Yerushalayim? Have you not known the things which happened there in these days? Apparently, Cleopas and his friend were the only ones who were estranged to the things of Yah, not, not the one who they're calling a stranger. <laughs> oh, boy. So he said to them, what things? Please educate me since I am a stranger and do not know of these things. So they said to him, the things concerning Yeshua Natsri, Yeshua of Nazareth, who was a Navi, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and, and in word before Elohim and before all the people. And how the chief Koranim, the chief priests, and all the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. We thought he was the Goel, Israel, the redeemer of Israel. Indeed, besides all of this, today is the third day since these things have happened. Yes, certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. But apparently they had not believed. They were still in hopelessness. They were still in unbelief. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but him they did not See, so they're somber, they're sad, without any hope. And Yeshua lovingly rebuked them and said, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Mashiach to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? Cleopas, you're seeing the vision of glory, okay, right before your eyes. And beginning from Moshe and all the Nevi'im, from, from Torah and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Yeshua showed his Talmudim, these two Talmudim, everything concerning himself using what? The Torah, what we call the Tanakh, the Old Testament. No need. I tell you the truth. Yeshua proves it. No need. Even the first uh, apostles uh, they, 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 there was no Brit Hadashah. They proved Yeshua, who he was, by using the Torah and the prophets. Okay, the Kudvim, the, the writings. There was no Brit Hadashah. So we're, we, if we're not able to prove Yeshua in the Torah, 
and in the prophets, in the Kudvim, the Psalms, the writings, then we're not learned of him. Then he is still a stranger to you and to me. If we're not able to do that, then he is a stranger. So let's continue. Um, so in verse 28, then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would go on further. You know, he indicated as if he, no, I'm going further, so later out, by see ya, and um, to test to see if they wanted more of him, if they wanted more of the word, if they wanted more of his presence. This is going to be a test for all of us in these last days. How far do you want to go? God will never and will not force his presence upon us. We have to want him. He is the desired pearl that, uh, uh, of great price that we should sell all the field just to get that. Sell everything else that you're, you, you've been focused on, everything else that you, you thought was valuable. You need to, to, to realize that he's the most valuable thing. If we don't get to that place, we're going to miss out on the greater things, on the greater revelations, on the greater glory that he wants to give us. And so, but good for them that they constrained him in verse 29. They constrained him saying, abide with us, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. So he gladly stayed with them. He went in to stay with them. This is what the Holy Spirit is waiting. He will not force. He's waiting for us to linger in his presence. Oftentimes we, we, we have a little presence in our worship, in our time, in our devotion, and it's enough for us. We get up and go on instead of just lingering and staying in his presence where he will break bread and open the word and give us even greater revelation, greater instructions and greater direction and greater guidance. If only we would stay and linger in his presence and ask him to abide with us. If we abide in us and if we abide in him and he in us, we will bear much fruit. It's in the abiding, beloved. Holiness is knowing his presence and staying in his presence. And it's in, in knowing him that we're able to do all those things that he calls us to do in the first place that marks the things that mark for our holiness. So let's continue in verse 30. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread and blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to them. And it was upon this act because they invited him to abide with them. And when you break bread, it's the most intimate thing you can do with friends, with beloved. You know, you do not, for the most part, to eat with someone is to eat with someone that's a friend, to eat with someone that's in relationship with you. You don't eat with a stranger. Biblically, you don't eat with a stranger. You eat with, with people you have a relationship with. So when they asked him to linger and they abide and, they all, and he broke bread, they were going to break bread together, it brought a greater level of intimacy and into me see. So they were able to see into him the living bread, and then they saw the vision of glory. Cleopas' name was finally fulfilled because he saw the vision of glory. And in verse 31, it says, Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Oh, hallelujah. Bo Hashem, when your eyes are open to know him, there's nothing like knowing him, not knowing of him. But, you know, Job says, I have heard of you by the hearing of my ears, but now my eye has seen you. My spiritual eye has seen you. My spirit has seen you. And they even say something very similar. And they said, Was it not, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? The heart represents the spirit, the ruach. The ruach was open, but their minds were shut. Their minds, their eyes were not open, but the eye of their spirit knew and understood. Their hearts were burning, and they understood, but it had not reached their minds yet. Um, and so they said, did not our hearts? Yeah, so when their eyes were open and they knew him, first of all, in verse 31, he vanished from their sight. He, 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 now, now, the faith, uh, the, the righteous is called to live by his faith, no longer by sight. So he gave them enough sight, enough seeing to increase their faith. Now he, he, he depart, vanished from their sight so that now they can walk it out 
in faith. It's the same with us. God gives us a level of vision of his glory and then he disappears from our sight because he wants us to hold on to those and to walk by faith and not by sight. He gives us just enough so that we can strengthen our faith. Hallelujah. As long as we abide in him and he in us, as long as we linger in his presence, as long as we get to know him, then we can truly be holy and do the things that call for holiness, that ho or that holiness calls for in the Torah. Doing the mitzvot sanctifies us. This is how we sanctify ourselves. We sanctify ourselves by his word. In verse uh, in John 17, to sanctify more Lord in your word for your word is truth. We are sanctified in the word. We are sanctified in prayer. We are sanctified in doing the word. Don't be a hearer only. You show me, you tell me about your faith just by talking and Yaakov James says I will show you my faith by my works. That word works is mitzvot. It's obedience to the commandments of Yah. This is how we are to show our faith to the world. And we can only do the things that the Torah calls us to, to do that points to His holiness when we know the great I am, when we know that He is yud heh our God, when we know Him, it's in the knowing Him, in the drawing close to Him and He, close, and he to us, that we can remain in His holy presence and carry the weightiness of His holiness to the world. In verse 32 again, and they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us in the road and while he opened the scriptures to us from Moses to the prophets? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Yerushalayim. Hallelujah. They couldn't even wait. They just came from Yerushalayim. They got up and returned back to Yerushalayim to bring the good news. Now they had faith to encourage the rest of the body, the rest of them who are still hopeless, even though they heard they couldn't find a body, even though an angel told them he was risen, they were still in doubt. And so these two were two more witnesses that God came, went, sent to confirm of the resurrection of the risen one, Yeshua HaMashiach. So they went back, they returned to Yerushalayim and found the 11 and all those who were with them gathered together saying, the master is risen. Indeed, he is risen. He has appeared to Shimon, truly he has appeared to Shimon. And they told them about the things that happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Beloved, this is how he is known to us, in the breaking of the bread, in, in seeking the scriptures, in seeking the Torah. Oh, how I love your Torah. It is my meditation all the day, David says in Psalm 119. And when we seek the word, when we break the bread together, when we fellowship, when we linger in his presence, when we, when we abide in him and he in us, then we can truly reflect his holiness because he is yud heh vav heh, your God, and he is holy. Kedushim to you, ki kadosh hu, yud heh vav heh Eloheichem. Holy you shall be, for he is holy. He is yud heh vav heh, Yehovah, your God. God bless you. Hope this blessed you very much and stay in his presence because that's where true holiness is. God bless you.